How can someone create a trillion dollars out of nothing? If I could buy long-term puts, if I could buy a five-year put on every one of the cryptocurrencies, I'd be glad to do it. What do UFOs, Sasquatch, the Loch Ness Monster, and Bitcoin all have in common? If you said nothing, well, <laughs> you're wrong. All of them are shrouded in mystery, but only one of them has made lots of people overnight millionaires. And it's not the producers of Finding Bigfoot. No, we're talking about Bitcoin. There's nothing truly mysterious about Bitcoin itself. You can go buy one on Coinbase right now. Or more realistically, you could probably only buy like 0.01 Bitcoins, since the price has skyrocketed tens of thousands of dollars since the start of the coronavirus pandemic. No, the mystery I'm talking about is the one surrounding Bitcoin's creator. He, or her, or them, nobody really knows, was named Satoshi Nakamoto, and in 2008 he published an obscure white paper called Bitcoin a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system, which outlined blockchain technology and started the whole crazy cryptocurrency ball rolling. These days, everyone is talking about Bitcoin. The price of Bitcoin even passed $50,000 recently. To the moon, as Elon Musk would say. At its peak earlier in 2021, Bitcoin commanded more than a $1 trillion market capitalization. Not bad for something invented by an anonymous person. Wait, what do you mean anonymous person? How can we not know who created Bitcoin? I mean, someone invented it, right? But get this, to this day, nobody knows who or what Satoshi Nakamoto is. Turns out, whoever wrote the white paper was probably using a pseudonym. He, she, or they have never revealed their true identity, and nobody has ever proven who Nakamoto actually is. And while I can't prove anything either, I'm putting on my detective hat and gathering up all the evidence to try and solve the greatest mystery of the 21st century. Who the fuck is Satoshi Nakamoto? Just like any good superhero, or supervillain depending on who you ask, the origin of Satoshi Nakamoto is equally mysterious. The white paper came out of the proverbial blue and took a lot of people in the cryptography community by surprise. Nobody had ever even heard of Nakamoto before. After the white paper went public in 2008, version 0.1 of Bitcoin was released by the eponymous Nakamoto to SourceForge in January of 2009. At this point, its creator was still heavily involved with development of Bitcoin software. Main branches of the code came directly from Nakamoto, though other programmers were now helping to refine it. Then, in mid-2010, Satoshi Nakamoto disappeared. He started by giving control of the SourceForge repository to Gavin Andreessen, one of the main Bitcoin developers. Then he transferred ownership of several domains to other community members, and stopped all recognized involvement in the project. Who was Satoshi Nakamoto? Where did he come from? What inspired him to create Bitcoin? And why did he ultimately vanish? People have been trying to answer those questions for over a decade. But even in today's hyper-connected digital world, Nakamoto has eluded them all. So what's the evidence that we've collected so far? Let's take a look at some of the facts in the case. The very first block of Bitcoin Nakamoto generated, called the Genesis block, had a reward of 50 Bitcoins. The first clue to Nakamoto's identity was a line of text embedded in the Coinbase transaction data, reading, The Times, Chancellor on Brink of Second Bailout for Banks, a headline from the UK newspaper, The Times. Clearly, Nakamoto was reading the Times. Does that mean he was British? Stefan Thomas, yeah, Stefan is the best name in the world, a Swiss software engineer, took the timestamps from all of Nakamoto's messages and put them on a graph to see which hours Nakamoto was most active. It turns out that there were almost no posts at all between 5 a.m. and 11 a.m. UK time on any day of the week. Those same hours are between 2 p.m. and 8 p.m. in Japan, which would be a weird time for anyone to sleep. Other tidbits which suggested Nakamoto's possible Britishness include his native level command of the English language, and his use of British spelling for words like color, gray, flat, and maths. All of this has led many to believe that Nakamoto must be British, but so far no likely Brit has turned up. Sherlock Holmes couldn't even crack this case, but maybe we can, let's keep digging through the clues. Lots of people with the name Satoshi Nakamoto have been looked up and crossed off the list by reporters, investigators, and amateur sleuths. Most of them turned out to be dead ends. But there was one person who, for a brief moment back in 2014, seemed like he might be the real deal. His name is Dorian Prentice Satoshi Nakamoto, 
a Japanese American man living in California. Wow. Which one do you want? I want the big one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, this will be good. Oh, jeez. We have some water too. Hey, uh, who's yours? Nakamoto was a physicist who worked as a systems engineer on classified defense projects for the government as well as a computer engineer for, wait for it, technology and financial service companies? Could we finally be on the right trail? Newsweek interviewed Dori Nakamoto and his daughter and uncovered some tantalizing evidence. For instance, his daughter said that, after getting laid off twice, her father became a libertarian and he told her that she should start her own business, not under the government's thumb. Dorian actually said this enticing phrase during one interview. I am no longer involved in that and I cannot discuss it. It's been turned over to other people. They are in charge of it now. I no longer have any connection. Oh, but later it turned out that he was responding to a question about his work on top secret defense projects, not about Bitcoin. Saying, I'm no longer in engineering. That's it. And even if I uh, was, um, when we get hired, you have to sign this document contract saying uh, you will not reveal anything we develop uh, during and after the employment. Shoot, I thought we had something there. This rabbit hole just gets deeper and deeper. The real Satoshi Nakamoto, whoever he is, later posted on his P2P Foundation's website, I am not Dorian Nakamoto. But the same website later posted a message saying it had been hacked, so nobody knows if the real Nakamoto published the message or not. Okay, Dorian Satoshi Nakamoto may or may not be THE Satoshi Nakamoto. Let's chase down some other leads. Some people have claimed to know what Nakamoto's secret identity is. John McAfee, the notorious computer security researcher turned international fugitive who ended up hanging himself claimed to know exactly who Satoshi Nakamoto was, but that he didn't want to reveal Nakamoto's true identity in order to protect his safety. What if you're wrong? Because if you're right, um, that Satoshi is going to have to hire 50 security guards and change his life, yeah. uh, else he will die, uh, or you know it, this is going to happen. Um, why? Everybody's going to want a piece of him, including the governments that demand that he pay taxes on it. But what if you're wrong? you will have destroyed an innocent man's life yeah. forever. Of course, McAfee said that right after yelling that the coronavirus was a government hoax while waving an AK-47 in the air, so who knows. I guess we'll have to take that particular bit of evidence with a very large grain of salt. There were some other pioneers of blockchain technology and early adopters of Bitcoin who the evidence says might be Nakamoto. Let's put the magnifying glass on them. Programmer Hal Finney was one of the first Bitcoin developers, and Forbes journalist Annie Greenberg had a writing analyst compare Finney's writing to Nakamoto's, saying that it was the closest match he had ever seen. Finney even lived a few blocks away from Dory Nakamoto in California. But Finney provided Greenberg with copies of his emails with Nakamoto, even a record of the very first Bitcoin transaction, from Nakamoto to Finney. Greenberg ultimately concluded that Hal Finney was not our guy. In 1998, cryptographer Nick Sabo published a paper on a concept he called BitGold, a direct precursor to blockchain technology. Nakamoto even cited Sabo in the Bitcoin white paper. Sabo also denies being Nakamoto, even though he was part of the original group of developers, along with Finney and Y. Dai, another cryptocurrency theorist who, of course, denies being Nakamoto. There are also some people who definitely want us to think they are Nakamoto. Case in point. Craig Wright. Wright is an Australian academic who has claimed to be Nakamoto, and in 2015 Gizmodo wrote that Satoshi Nakamoto was a joint pseudonym for Craig Wright and computer forensics analyst David Kleiman, who died in 2013. Several prominent members of the Bitcoin community even supported Wright, but other Bitcoin developers and journalists have cast doubt on Wright's claim. So he might not be the most likely suspect, but we can't count him out. Hold on. What if Nakamoto wasn't just one person, but several? Security researcher Dan Kaminsky said that he thinks Nakamoto was a group of 11 people. And Kaminsky is not the only one who thinks that. So was it Hal Finney, Y. Dai, Nick Sabo, Gavin Andreessen, and others all working together? Did they call themselves Satoshi Nakamoto just to keep everyone guessing? That's a tough argument to ignore. 
Since Bitcoin is meant to be decentralized, it would make perfect sense for a group of people to develop it together, with no one person really owning the whole kit and caboodle. Wouldn't it? It looks like Satoshi Nakamoto is turning into the D.B. Cooper of the 21st century. Nakamoto staged a similar disappearing act, appearing out of nowhere, creating a huge amount of wealth from literal thin air, then disappearing again just as quickly. Wallets belonging to Nakamoto have mined over 1 million bitcoins since the blockchain first went online, worth almost $40 billion at today's prices. But Nakamoto could be just as mythical as Sasquatch or the Loch Ness Monster, and we don't even have fuzzy photographs of him. Wait, could Nessie have written the white paper? I mean, this is just nuts. How can someone create a trillion dollars out of nothing? Something worth more than Apple, Google, or Facebook, the biggest tech companies in the world, and then just vanish. How can we live in a world with the internet connected to everything, including my refrigerator, a smartphone in everyone's pocket, and not know who this guy is? Elon Musk is out there literally relaunching reusable rockets. We have rovers on Mars that send back HD quality video and fly remote drones. Jeff Bezos is even shooting himself into outer space. <laughs> <It's a laughs> and we're using CRISPR to edit our own DNA. How is it possible that with all this technology, and so many people trying to find out who he is, that we still don't know who Satoshi Nakamoto is? What if it's Elon Musk? He certainly tweets enough about crypto to deserve a closer look. Let's look at his tweets. Hmm. Tesla now accepts Bitcoin, Dogecoin to the moon. I thought we were just trolling here, but could it be him? We're on to you, Mr. Musk. You and your little Doge too. Hmm. Maybe this is all a dream. Maybe simulation theory is right. We're all living in the matrix. And one day soon, we're just going to wake up in a protein pod on the other side of a building somewhere. I mean, this is so crazy that it has to be fake, right? Is this even real? Is anything real? <sighs> okay, calm down. Take a deep breath. Keep it cool. We can do this. Well, maybe we'll never know who Satoshi Nakamoto is. Or was. Maybe he'll reveal himself to the world someday. Solve the mystery for us. But where's the fun in that? I think that as long as we keep digging, we can crack the case. I, for one, will keep following the clues, connecting the dots, drawing the lines, crawling Reddit, and going back down alleys on the dark web, chasing up every lead. If those Bigfoot hunters and UFO nuts are still at it after all these years, then we can keep up the chase until we finally have Nakamoto cornered. After all, Bigfoot might be out there, but he didn't make anyone a billionaire. One way or another, we're gonna solve this case. Elementary, my dear Satoshi.